Hi, welcome to the Electronics Lab. In this video, I am going to use KiCad to simulate this simple RL circuit to determine the voltages across and current through the two devices. I should note that this example comes from this online textbook and you can find the link to it in the description. I should also point out that I have a video where I do the analysis of this circuit by hand and you can find the link to that video here or in the description as well. Now even in a simple circuit like this, KiCad has some limitations of what it can simulate. So I'll show you the workarounds that I used to get all the values I wanted. Now let's jump over to KiCad to build and simulate this circuit. Okay, I have got the blank KiCad schematic here and I'm going to start placing some components. Go into symbol and now when I click it'll actually bring up the list of symbols and you can see here I've got some recently used ones because I've just recently had KiCad open. So I'll place that voltage source, then I will place a resistor and an inductor and last component is that reference point. Now I'll wire it up and then set the component values. 5 ohm resistor, 10 millihenry inductor, and the voltage source, I need to go down here to edit spice model. I'm going to set the AC magnitude to 10 volts. I don't actually need to set a frequency because I'm going to do an AC sweep. In that AC sweep statement, that's where I'm going to say what frequencies to sweep over. And just for the label, I'm going to change V source to 10. And then annotate the schematic to give some numbers to the components. Put some labels on the circuit so I know which nodes are which. And I won't be able to put a label for the voltage across the resistor because it is not referenced relative to my ground reference point here. The voltage across the resistor is Vs minus Vl. And we'll see in a sec that this is actually one of the limitations that I have in KiCad is I can't do arithmetic Vs minus Vl when I'm doing a sweep. Now add a text block where I have my spice directive. So I'm going to do an AC sweep. I'm going to make it a linear sweep. I'm going to sweep over 100 points from 60 hertz up to 600 hertz. Now the only frequency I care about is 60 hertz. As long as I have 60 hertz in this sweep range, I'm good. And we'll see why in a minute or so. Drop that down, go up to tools, bring up the simulator, run the simulator. Now if I go into add signals, you'll see I only have the inductor voltage and the source voltage that I can add to the plot. I'll just put the inductor voltage on there. I don't have enough signals. So here's that limitation I was talking about. I can't put the voltage across the resistor in here because I can't plot out arithmetic statements. I also don't have the current. So I'll show you what I can do to be able to simulate all of these things at once. The voltage across the resistor, voltage across the inductor, and current through those devices. This is a bit kludgy. It's a pretty ugly workaround, but it does work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place an inductor here and a resistor here, and then my resistor, the second resistor, will be referenced to ground. Now set these values. Same value of inductor. Same value of resistor. Annotate again give those new components numbers, add a label for the voltage across the resistor. And now when I run the simulation and I go to add signals, now I have got voltage across the resistor as well. I still don't have current. So let's go back to the schematic and enter something that allows me to measure the current. I'm going to add a third branch. That's the exact same thing as a second one, except I'm going to put a second resistor in that branch. And that second resistor is going to be a tiny resistor that's basically a current sensor. If I hit R, then the resistor will rotate. And set values again. And if I set this one to a really small resistance, it will barely affect the circuit. And if I make it 0 0.001, then the current or the voltage that I measure will be a thousand times less than the current actually is. So it's an easy calculation then to figure out what the current actually is. And let's add a label here. Call that IR. And simulate one more time. Add the voltage across that current sensing resistor. And now I've got my magnitude and phase plots for all of the signals I care about from 60 hertz up to 600 hertz. 
Remember, I only care about 60 hertz. So here's what I can do. For each one of these signals, I can add a cursor and then move the cursor all the way down to 60 hertz. And then the reading will be the values that I care about. Okay, I have all of the signals I care about listed here with their gain and phase at the frequency where the cursor is. Now if I dial the cursors, all six of them down to 60 hertz, I've got all of the values I care about. So you do need to be aware that the magnitudes that are shown here are decibels, and actually more specifically dBV. So they're decibels measured with respect to the one, a one volt reference. And I'll show you how to convert dBV into voltage. Okay, I grabbed one of the measurements, and this is the one for the voltage across the resistor. It's 18.0452 dBV. Phase angle doesn't matter at this point. And I wanna know what this value is in voltage. And remember, the definition for dBV is 20 times the log of the voltage. And this is actually divided by one volt, but you divide by one, it doesn't have any effect. And if that equals 18.0452, I can rearrange this equation and figure out the voltage. So if I divide both sides of the equation by 20, and then take 10 to the power of both sides, that 20 over 20 cancels 10 to the log of something will just be left with that something. So the voltage is going to be equal to 10 to the 18.0452 over 20. And if I plug that into a calculator, I get 7.98472 volts. Now I can take all of those values that I've just measured. Well, I didn't actually measure the source voltage. I already know that it's 10 volts with a phase angle of zero degrees. But if I take the voltage across the resistor in dBV, the voltage across the inductor in dBV, and the voltage across that current sensor in dBV, I can convert all of those into volts. Uh, I do have to do one more step when I convert this into volts, and that's multiplied by 1,000. But when I do all of those things, this is what I end up with. I get the voltage across the resistor, as I've just mentioned, voltage across the inductor of 6.02032 with a phase angle of 52.9844 degrees, and a current of 1.59674 amps with a phase angle of negative 37.0101 degrees. And that's it. There were some workarounds that I had to do to get all of the measurements I wanted using the KiCad simulator but I was able to do it with a little bit of effort. You can compare my results to what I did in LT Spice in this video here. You can find the link to it down in the description. And you can also compare it to the video where I did this analysis by hand, and you can check out the video here or down in the description. And this example comes from an online open source textbook, so be sure to check it out for more examples, videos, practice problems, all sorts of things related to electrical and electronic circuits. And I have a secret. I appreciate you all. Thanks for watching. See you next time.